And there are questions about this talk? Okay, thank you, Gavin. Okay, the next speaker. The next speaker is Monica Maia from Porto Politecnico, Politecnico of Portugal. And he's talk about distance education for development training program in special need education. Thank you, Monica. Thank you. Okay, good morning. Um, I and uh, my colleague Rui Telsch are here representing um, inclusive school support unit uh, from School of Education of the Polytechnic uh, of Porto Institute from Portugal. And uh, we will present distance education for development of a training program in special education needs. Well, in the first part of this presentation, uh, we intend to discuss the considered key principles uh, for training programs that aims to, um, okay, that aims to um, support or reinforce inclusive profiles. In other words, uh, in the first part of this presentation, we tend to discuss the underlying principles um, for training programs focuses on turning people capable of implementing best support strategies for children to participate. In the second part, uh, we intend to mention how to turn workable this education model for inclusion through distance education devices. So what are the, grounded, uh, the grounds for our uh, education model for inclusion? Well, as you know, uh, inclusive education is an ongoing process um, that aims to offer uh, quality opportunities for all to learn and participate. And therefore, uh, we have to, or it implies, uh, to respect and respond uh, to different students' characteristics and needs and to know how to read the interaction between these characteristics and the surrounding, the surrounding environmental factors or events. Um, as represented on this picture, uh, on the basis of any uh, development in, in the society, uh, we have a triology established between research, innovation and education, um, where in fact research uh, is the, can be seen as the factory for innovation development, uh, which outputs cannot be seen without, without considering the implementation field. So considering that inclusive practices are ethical ways to act, uh, then when we think um, on research and innovation outputs um, on inclusive practices, <clears throat> we should think on it as an interaction process between um, knowledge and uh, a set of beliefs and values that also commands um, human practices. Then, uh, considering education ex sphere as a mediator between research and innovation dimensions and real practices outputs, then we should think on uh, education for inclusion, um, or we should think on it as a guest out between uh, scientific knowledge and values. And this way of thinking on the education for inclusion is clearly reflected on World Bank directives uh, where, te uh, where teacher training uh, should uh, not only acknowledge, um, acknowledge in skills dimensions, but also uh, professional attitudes and values. Um, as stated, uh, the principles for inclusion should be built into teacher training programs which should be about attitudes and values, not just knowledge and skills. Considering this, or recognizing this complex interaction between different elements, um, there have been uh, international efforts, uh, namely conducted by European Agency for Development in Special Needs Education, in order to find out a set of core values and competences that are aligned to inclusive profiles, which have been framed in the last decades into uh, Person environmental fit approaches uh, that are grounded in a multidimensional um, understanding of students' functioning in order to implement a continuum of supports. 
Well, by this inclusive profile is by these agency lenses um, seen as being boiled, uh, built in a core values, in four core values, that is valuing learning diversity, supporting all learners, working with others, and personal professional development. And these core uh, values are associated with teachers' competences areas that are made up in three main elements. Attitudes or belief demands, knowledge or level of understanding and skills to implement uh, the knowledge in a practical situation. So based in these metrics, um, a positive interaction between the triology established between research, innovation and education implies that academic staff and trainers um, conceive the training programs as an appropriate space to breach or to create breaches between um, the research knowledge and the practical inquiry, that is situational needs and challenges that professionals face on their daily practices. Uh, establishing a constant connection between propositional, procedural and situational uh, knowledge is uh, the structural uh, principle of our education model for inclusion. And having this in mind, our theoretical assumptions for um, education model for inclusion is then that training teachers is training people to work with people and therefore requires working with values. And therefore we should be able to help teachers to look at the educational reality through the lenses of human rights and values. And if we want to turn all contests habilitated to receive all students, we also should be able to help teachers to stop playing the game of finding differences and start playing the game of finding the equals. In other words, we should be able to educate um, for teachers to become uh, experts of support and not to become experts in micro areas of impairments. Well, the pedagogical implications of these theoretical assumptions are then uh, that we should, in any training program, to um, have a start point um, teachers' practical situations or teachers' problems and challenges as essential triggers for change. And uh, we should explore um, extreme situations to acknowledge the, the, these situations through the eyes of the knowledge based on research. It's of these constant connections on the need of this constant connection between uh, um, propositional, um, procedural and situational knowledge that uh, uh, we intend to conceive and build uh, the education devices or the distance education devices that now uh, Rui will talk about. Okay, I'm supposed to assure uh, the practical uh, aspect of, of these matters. Uh, let me just show you first uh, what we do, because we work with assistive technology at the School of Education, and we will get there, uh, because um, after all, we're talking about distance education, and distance education, also, we can also consider it as uh, assistive technology. Uh, we, um, of course, uh, there's a lot of things we could do, uh, talk about uh, uh, assistive technology. Uh, we don't have much time. I just want you to show you that uh, in terms of technical uh, components, uh, we work with uh, communication, mobility, manipulation and orientation uh, devices. That means that we work with uh, interpersonal communications for alternative communication, PC accessibility, telecommunications, uh, web accessibility, reading and writing uh, strategies. This is very important also for uh, uh, learning difficulties. Of course, we also have um, other valences in mobility. Uh, we explore everything about uh, manual and electronic mobility uh, for accessibility where, uh, at the homes, uh, adaptations for vehicles, uh, sports, games, positioning, sitting, 
and also we uh, studied uh, many aspects related to adapted tourism. Uh, we also have uh, areas in dressing and clothing, eating, hygiene, uh, and domotics for manipulation. And what uh, is more important for us is in, kinds of, in terms of orientation uh, for blind, guide dog, early intervention. And this is the point where we want to get the cognitive aids and behavior aids. So uh, we work a lot with uh, learning management systems and the, it's this learning management systems that we are going to uh, do next in the project. So we are supposed to do a training program and a training course which we mean to do in a B-learning system, that means a mist uh, of presence and, and distance uh, uh, training. Uh, and we are also supposed to build an e-learning uh, module uh, to provide behavior modification techniques based on social learning and the use of web applications for this project. That means that uh, the, the web application is going to be assessed by uh, all kinds of persons, uh, especially by parents and teachers. And we are supposed to create a virtual environment uh, that means a training system where uh, parents and teachers can access and also for higher education students, teachers and all experts working with EHD students uh, to, uh, for, for a training and structured model. Uh, that means that this learning management system will be a, a kind of a colla um, collaborative uh, learning system uh, where instructors and all partners of the project are going to participate and so we will build, we will build a virtual community. So in terms of technical components, we will use uh, a learning management system like Moodle uh, maybe we'll have a front-end like Joomla, uh, of course this is uh, rubbish for, for you, uh, chat for synchronous communication, forums, journal, glossary, lessons, web quests, database, comms, and we are going to build learning objects so that we can uh, perform all technical aspects. In terms of human com uh, components, uh, we know that we have more efficient tools uh, with the learning objects for the training. We will have better communication, we hope, for synchronous and asynchronous uh, communication. We, it is supposed that we have webinars uh, and time management is also something that uh, is very positive in this kind of, uh, of uh, in this system of learning. Of course, we'll have to take in consideration something very important, for example, the digital literacy of the learner. Uh, most uh, technicians or most teachers don't have much literacy, uh, digital literacy, which causes most of the time anxiety and emotional constraints. That means that we have to overcome these conditions. Uh, besides, we have to uh, pay attention to the cognitive style of the persons uh, and specially use universal design for learning uh, in multimedia, so that means all supports will be very useful uh, for uh, what we want. And also, of course, socio-economical variables. So this is all the component of the distance education, which is the complement, uh, I complement with what Monica said, and what we really want is to build a, a real, real virtual learning community and we hope this is very successful for the project. So this is very short, thank you very much. Thank you, Manuel and Rui. Uh, there is question. There are questions about uh, this talk. Sorry. 
Sí. sí. Ok. Appunto, oramai siamo pochi, siamo rimasti in pochi. Volevo sapere, io non so come sono le condizioni scolastiche in Portogallo, in Grecia, in Inghilterra, in Irlanda, non so come funzionano. Non so se loro sanno come invece vanno le cose qui da noi. Quindi, eh, cose molto belle, troppo belle forse per la nostra scuola. Quindi un invito a um, creare degli strumenti però sulla realtà effettiva della nostra scuola. Noi abbiamo le classi con 25-30 studenti, classi fredde, senza riscaldamenti, gli alunni che scappano dalle finestre, di notte vengono e ci fregano i computer, ci vandalizzano tutto quanto. Quindi questa bella teoria però che venisse ad avere, insomma, cioè che potessero scendere loro con i piedi per terra perché insomma quale cose non sono purtroppo così belle, quindi un invito a studiare le nostre scuole per poter fare tutto questo. Okay, okay. Uh, thank, thank you very, very much, much for the participation, participation to this session. session and I have a pleasure to special thanks to all participants uh, of uh, this session. We have seen an overview of uh, the problem and behavior problem of ADHD and how the technology can support uh, this problem. So, um, thank you very much for your participation. Outside of the, um, the room, you can uh, find the certificate of attendance. And thank you very much.